गुड मॉर्निंग हेलो सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग एम आई एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल सर ऑडिबल ओके फाइन द स्क्रीन मूव ஆகுதா பாருங்க पीपीटी प्लीज सर इट इज इन द फर्स्ट स्लाइड सर ओके ना मूव ஆகுதா नो सर इट इज इन द फर्स्ट स्लाइड सर ओके uh good morning and uh, uh first of all i thank uh, the secretary principal and uh, correspondent of uh, inrr janigamal college for giving this valuable opportunity and i am very also thankful to the department of zoology head of the department faculty members particularly the organizing secretary dr veni sanga pandian for inviting me for this uh, uh, international conference on recent uh, progress in biological uh, sciences i think uh, the organizing uh, secretary has uh, uh, selected a appropriate topic which is uh, need for the younger generations and i noted that uh, the organizing secretary has uh, invited and uh, many resource persons particularly dr kanan from peria university dr danison and dr murugan and dr balakrishnan i think uh, the younger generations will uh, benefit from the above invited talk and uh, today i am going to talk about uh, a title entitled uh, emerging contaminants in the aquatic uh, environment i have chosen this particular topic uh, because of two reasons uh, one is uh, it is a hot topic uh, in the field of aquatic toxicology and uh, another one is uh, this particular topic has attracted the scientific community all over the world and uh, students can take up this type of uh, pro- this type of topic for their projects as well as their um mpil and uh, phd program i think uh, after having uh, a detailed investigation of this emerging contaminants in the aquatic environment uh, student uh, can go for a yeah, very good papers in standard uh, journals uh, in such a way you will get uh, more opportunity to go abroad to do your phd as well as your uh, uh, postdoctoral program and uh, almost uh, time 11 10 i am going to talk about another one hour and all the participants i request to note my email madanramesh@yahoo.com so at any time you can contact me regarding any clarification and uh, any doubts so coming to the topic uh, it is entitled as emerging contaminants in the aquatic environment and what is emerging contaminants why it is designated as uh, emerging contaminants what purpose it is designated by the emerging contaminants all we are going to learn another half an hour and for now before that uh, i like to give you a small introduction about this particular uh, topic particularly i think the uh, audience try to mute all your cell phone and uh, try to listen the topic and uh, what i want to say that yeah play is it a threat kalyana panna pora panna pari mudichu ah pula eppadi ayo sir illa illa adu one oru idu mudinjirukku adrulla enado link mari vandru feedback link na adha fill panna da certificate vara hello hello yara pay panna unmute panna solunga seri irukku 
Yeah, I'll have you please unmute. Participants, please unmute yourself. Sorry, sorry. Mute, mute. mute. Baki Shri, ah, participant, Baki Shri, kindly unmute yourself. Pa. Yeah, Baki yeah, Shri. Uh, Thank you, sir. Baki Shri, Baki Shri. Madam Baki Shri. I think host can uh, mute uh, others. Uh, host can mute others. Okay. okay, sir, I will do that. Sir. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. Dear participants, uh, I think a small problem, I think it has solved. The environmental is under stress. Or otherwise, I can say that uh, there are too many threats to the environment. And that's why we are facing a lot of issues in the form of uh, diseases. And if you ask what are the major threats to the environment, in my PPT, I have pointed out uh, the seven most important threats to the environment. What are the seven most important threats to the environment, which include the population growth, pollution, climatic change, deforestation, melting polar ice caps and uh, ozonic dead zones. And finally, I included loss of biodiversity. When all the above six are happened, finally it leads to the loss of biodiversity. And here I have mentioned the population growth as a five, followed by the pollution. Dear students, when the population is increasing, our demand is also increasing. When our demand is increasing, the pollution load into the environment is also increasing. This is the basic reason why the pollution is uh, increased in such a level in all the environmental matrices. And everyone is polluting the environment directly or indirectly, officially or unofficially, naturally or artificially. Everyone is polluting the environment. As I already said, all the environmental matrix, which may be a water body, which may be a hair or your soil, whatever it may be, including the space in decos, we are going to talk about that pollution also. So all the environmental matrices are highly polluted due to the natural as well as the anthropogenic activities. And if you take uh, the hydrosphere, it's very important for the survival of uh, the fauna and flora, including the human beings. It's highly polluted because you know that the aquatic ecosystem is the ultimate sink for all the pollutions. And for your information, I can say that more than 300 million tons of chemicals are introduced into the aquatic body every year. And around 140 million tons of fertilizers, pesticides are introduced into the aquatic environment, followed by 0 0.1 million tons of oil and gasoline components through accidental spray. Yes, in the beginning I said, aquatic body is the ultimate sink for all the pollutions. Even though we have uh, n number of chemicals or thousands number of chemicals in the aquatic environment, we have the scientific literature, we have the scientific document, we have enough document to prove how these chemicals are toxic. If you take pesticides, we have different kinds of pesticides like argonochlorine, argonophosphorus, pyrethroids, biopesticides, and we know that uh, the mode of mechanism behind all these pesticides, and if you ask 
what is the word of mechanism behind the hormone of phosphorus having a phosphorus group they have combined with the carboxyl group in such a way it affect the acetylcholine ester system which leads to the accumulation of the acetylcholine which leads to vomiting diarrhea finally the death of the organisms it is already proved and if you take hormone chlorine compounds they have the tendency to impact or affect the, the electrolyte system in our system as the movement of ions like sodium potassium chloride calcium magnesium the movement of ions between the water and the body in such a way it leads to the death of the organisms like that we have enough literature enough document to know how these chemicals are toxic to the environment particularly the aquatic organisms but i said i introduced the topic which means that uh, emerging contaminants now i openly say that uh, still now the research is going on or we don't know the impact of some of the chemicals or the presence of some of these chemicals in the aquatic environment because we are not monitoring we don't have any sophisticated system and their impact on the various organism from lower to higher organism has not yet been proved and their mode of action behind all this also not yet proved so they are we have to give some priority to all these chemicals and that's why they are grouped as emerging contaminants and so far many emerging contaminants has been identified in the aquatic bodies it's not a single chemical it's not in 10 number it's not in and number almost 700 emerging contaminants has been identified in the aquatic environment even though we have some literature about the impact of these chemicals on the aquatic environment the literature behind it, the mode of action behind it, how they enter into the system how they move into the different target organs of the aquatic organism still in the emerging state i can say a few example like the pfoa perchloroactonic acid one of the emerging contaminant the nano materials is also an emerging contaminant the pesticides also an emerging contaminant like pharmaceutical and personal care products endocrine disturbing chemicals like the ppd polybromonitel diethyl ethers all these are some of the examples of emerging contaminants and why i am mentioning all these chemicals no we have to work we have to expose different organisms to this type of chemicals and we have to analyze all the parameters or the entire physiology of the organism then only we can come to a solution how far these chemical enters and at what level these chemicals may be present in the environment and what is about the loec low absorbed impact on the system that can be done only having many many research and this particular text so dear students emerging contaminants are defined as uh, those chemicals that has been detected in global drinking water and for which uh, the risk to human health is not at low on the right side i mentioned they are not routinely monitored in the environment yes these chemicals are so far after last century they have not been monitored because we have no impact or uh, their impact on the various uh, organisms from lower to higher organisms and these are not new chemicals some of the chemicals they are already present in the environment for many years maybe at low 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 concentration maybe at nanogram per liter maybe at microgram per liter so they have not produced any impact and the aquatic organism and again i can say they are the future candidates yes we have literature for the metals and pesticides and we know how to monitor the entry of these chemicals into the aquatic environment but for particularly for the nano materials 
and the personal care products and the pharmaceuticals, there may be the future candidates. They are the candidates of future regulations because at present we don't have any regulated monitoring program about entry of these chemicals into the aquatic environment. Finally, I mentioned the presence and effects become known or emerging. Become known, yes. We know that these chemicals are present in the environment for many years, but their impact on the aquatic systems are unknown. So, dear students, emerging contaminants are chemicals which has been not monitored regularly. They may be present in the environment where the impact on the system have known or unknown. This is a clear cut definition and for the uh, the whole environmental or emerging contaminants. And these environmental contaminants, as I already mentioned, they are not included in national routine monitoring programs. That's why we are, nowadays we are talking about uh, the impact of uh, emerging contaminants in the aquatic environment. As I already mentioned, their impact, the fat behavior and ecotoxicology effects are also not well understood. And finally, I can say that uh, there is a lack of knowledge regarding their behavior in the environment. That is very, very important in terms of research, the behavior of the chemicals in the aquatic environment. For example, I can say that nowadays we are talking about the microplastic, microplastic, about their presence and their impact on the aquatic ecosystem. Yes, these microplastics also comes under emerging contaminants. They have been detected not only in marine, but also in freshwater ecosystem. But what about their behavior in their environment? You know that they are present in the environment for more than 100 years, two years, or 1,000 years. Some of the microplastics or plastics can undergo biodegradation, and most of the things are not biodegradable. So when they are not biodegradable in the aquatic environment, these chemicals being a polymer, they are able to absorb the other contaminants like pesticides, metals, which are present in the aquatic environment. That is a peculiar behavior of the microplastics. As I said, already 700 emerging pollutants and their metabolites and their transformation products are detected in the aquatic environment. Once they introduce a contaminant in the aquatic ecosystem, due to various environmental factors, it undergo many, many processes. Finally, the parent compound may be converted into a metabolite. And some of the chemical may be transformed into another chemical. And if you take about uh, the a molecular mechanism behind the toxicity of any chemical, you know that each and every chemical to be observed, to be disturbed, and they are undergo various reactions like chemical phase one reaction, phase two reactions. Phase, re phase one reaction means the chemicals undergoes oxidation and reduction process. And phase two reactions, it means the chemicals undergo detoxification process or the biotransformation process. In such a way, the parent compound may be converted into a new compound or a metabolite. And sometimes this metabolite is more toxic when compared to the parent compound. For example, I can give an example of the, the beside malathion. Malathion once entered into the environment, they are converted into a malathion. This particular metabolite is more toxic when compared to the parent compound. That's why these are given a much importance uh, and nowadays. And furthermore, the literature again, these particular chemicals are needed for the society. Generally, in future, after 20 years, we can monitor uh, these type of chemicals in the aquatic environment. And I said that there are n number of chemicals which are grouped under the emerging contaminants. And every day, each and every country is introducing new, new pesticides because we are getting new, new diseases 
or the new insect may affect the various agricultural crops. So scientists has to develop many, many pesticides. So they are introduced into the environment. So it occupy more than 57 percentage followed by the pharmaceuticals and personal care products and followed by toilets and surfactants. And coming to this particular topic, I have chosen the pharmaceutical and personal care products. And you may ask, or you may have a doubt, what is pharmaceuticals and personal care products? Very simple, pharmaceuticals are nothing but the drugs every day you are taking in order to improve your health, or if you come across any particular disease like the headache, fever, stomach pain, vomiting, diarrhea, whatever it may be, you are taking some drugs. And personal care products, PCB is nothing but uh, daily you are taking the bath, or you are applying soap or detergent or shampoo using powder and nail polish, lipstick, everything. These are comes under personal care products. Now we have a question, sir, we are using the pharmaceutical for many years. We are using the PCP for many years. Yes, we are using the pharmaceutical and personal care products for many years, generation to generation. And here's a question, whether you have come across any persons having some problem with the PCP, or any uh, person having a problem of using any drugs, I mean particularly the impact on the system, whether his liver is damaged or kidney is damaged, or the intestine is damaged or not, we don't have any answer, we don't have any report. That's why I am taking this particular topic because there are so, so many reasons. I will come later. And uh, participants, this PPCP, the terminology I use, PPCP, pharmaceutical and personal care products, is grouped into pharmaceuticals and personal care products. Pharmaceutical includes the drugs, antibiotics, animals, and others related compounds. And personal care, care products includes the cosmetics, shampoo, detergent, and others. Now, what is the, the characteristic future or the peculiar character of these emerging contaminants, particularly the PPCP or pharmaceuticals? These pharmaceuticals cannot be classified. Try to understand. These drugs cannot be classified a group of homogeneous compounds. They are not grouped as a homogeneous compounds like the other chemicals which are present in the environment or the other non-emerging contaminants. Why? What are the other emerging what are the other contaminants which are frequently detected and their impact was known to everyone is like uh, the CRC, chlorofluorocarbons, PCB, polychlorinated biphenyls, PAH, polyaromatic hydrocarbons. For these type of chemicals, we have the mechanism behind their impact and the system. And these chemicals have a similar structure, function, mode of, of action, but this pharmaceutical, they do or uh, not do have any similar physical, chemical, and biological properties. This is a peculiar behavior, or other way I can say a characteristic feature of these pharmaceuticals. If you feel a deck, you are taking Sarida. And if you feel, uh, uh, I think, fever, you are taking the, the dolo. And if you are having some stomach pain, you are having some painkiller. Like that, for each and every kind of diseases, we are taking different types of drugs. That's why they are not similar in structure, physical, chemical, and biological properties. They are just, or I can compare with the 
lock and key principle like the enzymatic system. They are going to target a particular molecule in such a way they minimize or they eradicate their particular diseases. Whereas the other compounds are not like that. India is a very big country, huge population, more than 140 million populations. We usually come across many, many, many diseases. And recently we have come across the COVID-19. And everybody has had two injections followed by some drugs, particularly the Dolo 